All right, guys, today we're going to be talking about the TRM Shadow. Now, this is one knife that uh, I feel like rarely ever do I, I get this feeling that like I'm truly holding something reasonably unattainable, but I am with the TRM Shadow. And this isn't like a crazy, crazy expensive knife. It's not like a one of one custom, but at the same time too, knowing TRM and knowing how dang hard these knives are to get the shadow, it really does feel cool knowing that like I have something, at least I'm holding something right now that is super crazy unattainable. Breaking down the TRM shadow, I did want to say that this knife and this TRM Atom were sent to me by Three River Machining Manufacturing. Still can't get it right, but they were sent to me by TRM and they wanted me to give one of them away. Now I'm currently, as at the time of filming this video, delineating or having my community do a poll to see which one they would rather have to see which one they would rather have because obviously giving one to the community, I would want to, to give the knife that the community wants to have to the community. So we will see the outcome of that and that will be a separate video, of course, filmed down the road a little bit. But in the meantime, I wanted to carry both of these knives, give my opinion, make some videos on them, so today I'm going to be going over the shadow. Now the shadow for me has to be, like I said, not only is it really cool because I feel like it's unattainium or unobtainium, but also I think it is very cool to see one, another American manufacturer making the Axis lock. So there are a handful out there. Tactile Knife Co. Uh, is one of them as well. There are a handful of others out there in the, uh, in the wild, but by and large, it is really cool to see other companies, you know, getting out there, experimenting with the Axis Lock because the Axis Lock has a lot of potential to it. And not only that, I think that uh, it's also very user friendly. So that's also pretty cool. Undoubtedly though, probably my favorite part about the TRM Shadow is its blade style. This, and I feel like I've been saying this kind of a lot here of lately, kind of has like a Borka-esque theme to it. So if you guys are familiar with Borka knives um, or Sebastian or Sebastian, um, from Borka, you know, he has a very distinctive style with this almost reverse tonto and a very large sweeping belly. You'll notice these things on knives such as the Stitch, whether it's the Microtech collaboration stitches or one of his custom pieces of work. It has a very reminiscent blade. That is by no means to say that this is a copy, but it's just very similar. And I say a lot uh, about my Gavco Nurse very much like in the same way where it kind of has that large opening hole, a very, uh, you know, pointed worn cliff style with a bit of a flowing blade. Obviously two different looks, but kind of relatives at the same time. So definitely this is a little bit more uh, kind of up my alley as far as at least blade shape goes. Of course, you guys also know I'm a huge sucker for anything with a forward finger choil. I love getting my finger right up on that cutting edge, at least for certain tasks, I feel like it's very helpful. Now, if you do happen to find yourself with a TRM shadow um, in general, like if you manage to find one, I highly recommend picking it up. Don't even finish this video, just go buy it because it's probably already gone by now, but if you can manage to find one, they're definitely very awesome. Uh, one thing that I will say that's very unique to them or reasonably unique is they have a very large flowing belly. So this definitely makes it really good for rocking motions. So i.e. if you're rocking your blade, trying to do like, um, like dicing of something, or if you're trying to chop something, you know, you're, this will allow you to rock the blade quite a bit. So that is a very uh, handy part to this. That's a very good blade shape for that. In addition to, it is also still very thin. TRM loves using this blade stock thickness. It's just under a tenth of an inch thick, if I remember correctly, for most of their blades. I believe all of them, including things like the Atom, the Neutron. And honestly, I'm here for it because I think that this is a really good blend of not just like performance, stability for an EDC knife, but also it just works very well for making a knife slicey. In addition, you have a nice high flat grind to this guy. It's not quite a full flat grind, but it certainly is going that direction. You guys can see how high that bevel is. And once again, being that it's reasonably thin blade stock already, you don't have 
to like really remove that much material before it becomes super slicey. So as far as uh, sizes go, at least in the family, the shadow is, I would say, somewhere in between an atom, as you guys can see, and a neutron. So it's definitely bigger than the neutron. Can't really put them all in the same frame here, I'm trying. But uh, definitely bigger than a neutron, but also noticeably smaller than an atom. So you guys can see there, okay, maybe not noticeably, but a little bit uh, thinner, or sorry, a little bit smaller than an atom. And in addition to that too, I would say the blade length is definitely where the atom wins out because this one has a more noticeable forward finger choil that cuts into that blade length just a little bit. In my opinion, I don't really think it's that big of a deal and it's just a pretty darn cool looking knife. In addition, it looks like they have also gone with a uh, kind of Strider-esque themed handle style on the back. So there is kind of a integral backspacer that's, like I said, uh, Strider-esque where this uh, handle slab is um, at least left thick around here to make a natural backspacer like you would see on a true like Strider SNG or SMF. Um, sometimes the customs omit this uh, on Striders, but you guys can see here like you have your titanium side and then that extra wide portion of G10. So they went with a very similar route. It's kind of hard to see, but that is what they did on the shadow. So pretty cool. I, I like it. It's a nice touch and it's a nice um, kind of like... Uh, it's a nice touch and something that you can definitely do pretty cool. Um, overall, this is unlike the Atom Neutron in some of TRM's other lineup. This does not have a full steel liner. The steel liner is very reminiscent of most Benchmades where it's kind of a, I want to say like rat tail tang basically because there is a large portion of steel around here obviously to formulate the axis lock and all this stuff and then it kind of runs back to about here and uh, it's just a stick tang that is there so it, I, I don't mind it at all once again griptilians have famously used this style of construction for decades to high effect it's totally strong enough for anything you'd be doing edc wise and for the thickness of this blade you're not gonna be like chopping down trees or anything so for an edc knife i think it's perfectly acceptable um and yeah uh, as far as it goes the construction is pretty cool i guess the last kind of neat little feature i like is it reminds me of like a clamshell even though i don't think it really was meant to be that way but you guys can probably see on this um the reverse side of the pivot is just milled in a kind of like i said clamshell clam shell manner and so i just think it looks cool it's a nice little touch it's like one of those things where they don't have to do that but a nice little pop of like flare creativity and then of course this one is or has a reversible pocket clip so you guys will notice that you know you have your um kind of like filler here um, metal filler on this side and then of course you have your pocket clip there so nice little touch i really like um, kind of gives it almost a custom knife feel or something along the lines of like a hinderer i know hinderers are super popular or super famous for their um kind of uh, tabs like this so yeah pretty cool pretty awesome i definitely don't mind the design at all uh the trm shadow of all of TRM's knives has definitely made a very big uh, impact on me. Like, I really like it. It's pretty darn cool. Uh, I don't know if, like, the choice came down to it, like, either the TRM Neutron or the Shadow. I'd probably still lean towards the uh, Atom just because the, or sorry, I'd probably still lean towards the Neutron just because it is so, so thin and super, super pocket friendly, like for doing things, like I said, where I love to use this is like trail running or activities where I need a knife that is just lightweight, compact, and just is something that you can throw in your pocket and forget about. However, for EDC, the shadow does make a lot of sense. Anyways, guys, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Hopefully you enjoyed learning about this. And hopefully you guys are watching this video at a time where you can jump into the giveaway. It's uh, something that I really am excited because I feel like a lot of people tell me like the TRM knives are so unattainable. So I'm super happy that TRM is working with me to do a giveaway so I can give away a knife that is something that you probably wouldn't get a chance to buy otherwise or not very commonly. So anyways, guys, as always, God bless and I'm out.